Zulia, you have been through quite a bit over the past month, and I appreciate you joining us today. I wanted to start with the beginning of the story. On November 15th last month, your husband was shot, and this is a story that has been in headlines across the country, across the world. Can you take us through what happened that day? Um, so my husband was street preaching. I mean, he's been doing that for over a year. Um, and usually he street preaches for 30 minutes before every evening service for our church. And I remember that day, like he just ended street preaching early. And I thought that was thought. I was like, maybe he's just not feeling it tonight or something. <clears throat> and then, yeah, like. I didn't even know what had happened. I just saw him, like I heard him loading up the sound system back in the car. He gets in the car, drives the car to the church. And at this point I had seen that, you know, he was bleeding and I'm like, are you okay? I thought someone maybe just threw a bottle at him. I had no idea what really had happened. He drives our vehicle to the church, unloads the sound system. He's about to get her daughter down and and I'm like, no, like, you can't, like, you're all bloody. We need to go home and get you cleaned up. And luckily, my brother showed up at that point. He's like, no, we need to get you to the hospital. So my brother ends up driving him to the hospital. And on the way to the hospital is when he kind of started throwing up and stuff. And and as soon as we got there to the emergency room, he started um, seizing. And... Like, even the doctors and the, the medical staff didn't even know that he was, the, that this was a gunshot wound. They thought that maybe... None of you knew. Yeah. I mean, that it's so yeah. it's so crazy that you were, you were with him, he's driving. I mean, you had no idea. You assumed it was an assault. That was the initial. Yeah. But at that point, once you got to the hospital, then they realized that something more was going on. Yeah, they didn't even, until they did a CT scan afterwards, then they realized, oh, there's a bullet in him and stuff. So, yeah, then that was pretty much it. That was the whole situation. And it was just kind of a waiting game. And they don't. What was your reaction to hearing that, Zulia? What was your, to hearing that there was a bullet? Because that's a very different situation than what you thought had happened. Yeah. Oh, my heart sank. Like, yeah. You know, from, okay, you know, yeah, maybe he needs some stitches to, oh gosh, like this, this is way worse than I had even, you know, assumed it was. And, and yeah, it, yeah, it was, yeah, I just felt sick to my stomach once I realized it was a gunshot wound. And, and then I remember like, even when we got to the urgent care, like he was like non-responsive. So it was, it was, it was hard. And you, I mean, you have two young children and here you are in a situation. What were the doctors telling you as far as once they realized what was happening and they're treating him, what, what were they saying in terms of his chances and, and what was going to potentially happen in those, in those days? I mean, everyone that talks to you just said, it's devastating. It's devastating. That's, that's the one word I remember from the night. Every doctor, every nurse just said, it's devastating. It's devastating. And I'm just like, like I felt so sick <laughs> it's like that's the last thing you want to hear you know like you start questioning like how like yeah. what's the last thing I told them you know or like yeah or why wasn't I paying attention you start questioning everything um and yeah and I mean even even I remember like even the neurosurgeons they said they're like we're waiting for neurosurgeons to come talk to you and stuff and they're like yeah it's devastating no one wanted to touch it they were like yeah, no one's going to touch it. No neurosurgeons. Yeah, it's just not operable. And then even just hearing the detective say, like, well, no more after the autopsy. It's like, what? Like, it felt like it was you just. You heard the, the detectives. Just, oh, my gosh. Wow. How did you because you have been you've posted on social media. You know, you had a message on Thanksgiving that was really inspirational and very powerful. How did you keep the faith? How have you kept the faith in these weeks with having two young children going through all of this chaos? How have you been able to do that to keep your faith? Honestly, I'm I'm like shocked. You know, like how? Oh, I honestly think it's people's prayers. You know, like that's the only way I can explain it. Because there's been moments where I'm like, how am I this okay? 
you know, like you even feel guilty for not crying. It's like, because I've yeah. seen it and it's like, it's so, you know, like in the beginning, like just seeing him like connected to everything where it's almost like he doesn't even look like himself. It's like, yeah, you start questioning, like, yeah, you start questioning everything, but it's like, I know it's people's prayers and I know God has a plan in all of this because there's no other way to explain it. Like, like how, the ugliness that I would see and just the peace that I had. I remember just like when he was in the ICU, like I say, everything's going to be all right. Like, how do you say that <laughs> when everything does not look all right? <laughs> so, yeah. When you're hearing police officers say, well, no, after the autopsy, I mean, that that instills such a hopelessness in people. And yet there you were being hopeful, asking people for prayers. And I love that you're crediting the prayer for what has happened. I, you know, I don't, I want you to share what you're comfortable sharing, but where are we now? We're a little more than a month out from the, this shooting and he was in ICU with very little hope. Where is he right now? How is he faring right now? Uh -huh. So right now he's made a lot of progress, you know, I mean, but in the days of progress, there's still frustration. There's still difficult days. Yes, we're grateful, but it doesn't mean, you know, the days aren't hard, you know, I'm like, just see your loved one in that situation. It's not easy, especially when, you know, he he was our main, the main provider for our household and he would go to work. And now it's like you see your person, it's like a whole reset. They have to relearn everything. And the brain is such a sensitive thing that we don't know still, you know, like what's going to happen, what tomorrow's going to look like, what a year from now is going to look like. I mean, we're hopeful and we're praying and we're contending for like a supernatural recovery, but there's just so much unknown still, so much uncertainty, but it's like every day we've been able to witness a miracle from that first night where they're like, you're going to start seeing blood just come out through like the holes, like his ears and stuff too. It's like he made it past day one and now here we are a little over a month and it's like the progress he has made, it's just amazing. I mean, now he's a little bit, he understands a bit more like the situation but we still don't know 100 percent how much he understands because he's unable to communicate at the moment you know so but but he is awake but he is awake and he is making progress yes, right now yes that's that is incredible and it's something you're giving us prayer points here because i was going to ask you how to pray but i think what you're describing you're telling us what we can be praying for and anybody listening or watching this you know praying for you praying for your children praying for for him and as far as finding the person who did this, um, do I mean, it, do the police have any leads on on that? Honestly, I don't. I don't even think so. I don't know at this point. I, in a way, like, I don't even care. I don't have the energy <laughs> to really worry about yes. that. Yes, I wish that person wasn't on the street. That would bring me some comfort and peace, but. At the same time, it's like the harm has already been done, you know, like. Well, and I want to and I want to thank you for your faith and the way that you have handled yourself. And, you know, it's inspiring people and it's speaking to people and it's showing people what faith you were saying before. I can't even believe, you know, that I've been able to be this calm and be this peaceful. And I think that's evidence of faith that people are seeing in you and in your family. And I just appreciate you. I know it's it's crazy right now sharing with us so that people know how to be praying for you and your family. Zulia, really appreciate your time. 